Hey guys, a little while back, I showed you my solution for getting temperature and humidity information from every room in your house into Home Assistant. If you haven't watched that video, take a look at it over here or in the description, since it tells you my story and why I'm undertaking this journey. The next part of that journey is being able to regulate all the valves that the underfloor heating system uses. Currently, that duty is performed by a Honeywell HCE80 with a valve per zone. Although hardware-wise it hasn't failed or anything, programming and software-wise it's again a part I'd like to replace. The HCE80 basically performs three functions. One, it turns on or off the individual zone valves. Two, it checks if the heat pump is in heating or cooling mode for however well that works, and three, it can send out a wireless or direct pump active command to the heat pump to which the circulation pump is currently connected. You could also connect the pump directly to it, but that's the way it's set up right now. But the main part that caught my interest is the subject of this video, and that is the valve control. As it turns out, the valves used are 230 volt normally closed type valves. Basically, that means without power applied, they are closed, and when power is applied, they slowly open and stay open as long as the power is applied. So, I started looking into making a custom relay PCB, because I like designing PCBs, to be able to control those just like the HCE80 does now. But, I quickly stopped doing that, because after looking around on AliExpress a little bit, well, you guys know how I like my cheap Chinese electronics, I found that pre-made relay boards were cheap really cheap. So, this video is about those relay boards and Home Assistant. Now, these relays can be used for all kinds of different purposes, not just controlling valves like in my use case. They are rated up to 10 amps, but I haven't tested them anywhere close to that, so your mileage may vary with that. I have been testing them for a little bit, and for all the workloads I subjected them to, they haven't missed a beat and successfully switch on and off without issue. So, the way I've envisioned this setup to work is that I take one of my favorite ESP32 boards, which runs a ESP Home software, and then Home Assistant can control these relays. Now, there were a few features I wanted these relays to have, and the most important three of those were, well, it needs to have relays. Duh. Then, the ESP32 needs to be able to trigger a relay if it's 3.3 volt GPIO pins. And third, I'd like the relay board to have optocouplers so that nothing from the AC side is directly connected to the DC side. And then there were some nice to haves such as screw holes and status LEDs. And after looking at all the available types on AliExpress and eBay and Amazon, I selected a few types and bought a bunch of 4x and 8x relay boards. The reason for these boards specifically are that they have a 5 volt trigger relays but the optocouplers can switch at anything above 2.5 volts and require very little power doing so. That means they work great with our 3.3 volt GPIO pins of the ESP32. And since I'm using my favorite ESP32 development boards anyway, those require 5 volts, so I only need a 5 volt power supply and both the ESP32 board and the relay board can use the same power supply. I will have some affiliated links in the description to these relay boards and the ESP32 modules I'd like to use. And if you want to support my efforts, thank you very much. Oh, and I realize I forgot to mention the price. A four relay board can generally be had for under $2. And the eight relay board costs around $4. That's why I bought a whole bunch of them because, well, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. And $2 for four relays, Relays? I can't even buy the relays for that, so yeah, that's awesome. So let's take a quick look at how this works, and I won't be going into the ESP home code. I'll uh, put it on the screen right now. But as you can see, the ESP home code is really easy, and after that, you can just use them in Home Assistant. If you do want to know how to create, compile, and upload this code, you can check out my previous temperature sensor or power meter videos, and I have detailed inscriptions in there. Basically, it's the same thing, and the code is really easy. I will have the code and everything you need linked in the description to a blog post, so make sure to check that out. Okay, once the modules are running the configured ESP Home firmware, the relays are available from within ESP Home's web interface, 
or a home assistant and can easily be switched. That also means they can be used within automations or things like Node-RED, but that's a subject for a future video. That out of the way, let's take a quick look at how to wire this up. Looking at the whole setup, from the ESP32 module to the relay board, we're going to have six wires in total. We're going to use four wires for the relays because I'm using a four relay wire board and we're going to connect those to four GPIO pins on our ESP32 development board. The ESP32 board will receive five volt power from a random phone charger power supply, but the relay board also needs five volt. So in this case, I'm going to abuse the pins on the ESP32 development board to pull the five volt through the board and power the relay board from it also. As we'll see later on in this video, the amount of power this requires is pretty tiny, so it won't be an issue unless you're trying to control a giant bank of relays or something like that. And thus, I also have the 5 volt pin and the ground pin connected to both the relay and the ESP32 board. If you're going to use separate power lines, make sure to keep ground connected between the ESP32 and the relay board. Now, while wiring the AC portion of this setup, Please take care and please, please watch out with tinkering with AC wires. Never do so with an AC circuit that's live. An unfortunate accident might actually kill you. And although Electroboom often demonstrates that you can take a lot of power, you might not be so lucky. So please take care that nothing's live while you're wiring things up. Wiring up the AC lines to the screw terminals, you have three pins or screw terminals you can connect wires to the NC, the common, and the NO. You can see the symbols on the board here. Common is where you connect the live wire coming out of your wall socket, so that supplies the power. The live wire on the side of your device, you connect to the same relay terminal block to either the NC or the NO. The difference between those two is the state of power while the relay is off. NC means normally closed, so no power while turned off, and NO means normally open, so power is flowing until the relay is triggered. This is mostly important in power loss situations when no power is applied or no microcontroller signal is received. NC won't allow power to pass through, and with NO, power will pass through to the device connected to the relay. In most situations, you probably want NC or normally closed, but I have both connected on my test board to show you what's what. My test board has four LED garden lights connected to it, one to each channel. Since the microcontroller is still off, you can see that one of the lights is on, but the others are off. That light is connected with NO, or normally open wires. You can see the difference here in this shot, where I'm using the different terminals compared to the other three. Now, when I turn on the ESP32 module, you can control the relays. If we proceed to enable all four relays, you'll see that the normally open connected one actually turns off, but the others turn on. Switching is really fast, even though it's running through Wi-Fi. By default, I've set my ESP home code to try and resume the last state that was on or off when power gets disconnected and reconnected. But that's something you can configure yourself in the ESP home code. So as I mentioned earlier, instead of using this for valve control as I am doing, you can basically hook up anything under 10 amps, or well, 10 amps might be stressing it because that is what these relays are rated for. But anything that's say below 8 amps should probably be fine. So your coffee maker or a fan or uh, some light or I don't know anything else you need DC or AC relay switching, these could make a great solution. And they're so cheap. Oh, I was talking about power usage before. As it turns out, it seems that each relay uses about 0.3 watts of power as you can see here when I switch one on. Now remember, we're feeding the relay board through the ESP32 board. So this is most likely the power that the relay is asking, not the optocoupler. So this is not being drawn through the GPIO pins. If I switch on all four of the relays, you can see a nice spike in the graph for each relay. So 
if you want to run like this with the power running through the ESP32 board, even hooking up 16 of these, that would still only mean 5 watts of power would go to the relay ports. Running that through an ESP32 development port would probably still be fine. But I think I'm going to design a sort of controller board in the future for my own use case, with some sockets and pins to make everything easier and make nice cable connections and use one external power supply instead of pulling it through the ESP32 development board. You'll probably see more about that in future videos. And, well, that's it really. That is how easy it is to hook up some of these simple relay boards that are insanely cheap to Home Assistant. If you were looking to control several AC or DC loads, that can be a great ready-made solution. And instead of using these ESP32s, you could also use an ESP8266, but I like using ESP32s better nowadays, so I'm going to stick with that. If you have any questions about this, let me know down in the comments, and well, don't forget to subscribe. I hope to see everyone back in the next video, and uh, catch you then. Bye-bye.